God bless you on this morning. I want to talk to you for a few minutes. Uh, this is my barbershop morning about I shall not want. It comes from Psalm 23. I'll, uh, God bless all of you that are watching via the scope, uh, via the web, and those that are watching uh, via the Periscope app. And, and those that are watching via replay. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about I shall not want. It comes from Psalm 23, and I'm going to read, God bless all of you that are on Renee Rainey 2, uh, I'm going to read from uh, Psalm 23, because this is a season where, uh, you know, if there are any financial shortages in your life, you're never more aware of it than this season where merchandising reaches its, its apex, where uh, every uh, there's offers at every turn. There's requests of people giving things. There's people talking about purchasing things. Um, but it says here that uh, the Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. You shall not be in want, for child of God. God knows what you need. God knows what it takes to take care of you, and God is concerned about taking you. Uh, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. David once said that I've been young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You shall not be in want. Scriptures declare that if you delight yourself in the Lord, that he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Matthew 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. So we serve a God uh, who has an awesome benefits package. We serve a God that can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. We serve a God that can provide. We serve a God that's not a liar, but he's a provider. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And we're going to go strictly from that. As we go through Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not be in want. I shall not be in distresses. I shall not be in lack. I shall not be in want. I shall not be in poverty. Uh, he's the God that gives us the power to get wealth. He says in Scripture, it says, Remember the Lord thy God, for he has given thee the power to get wealth. Also, it says, uh, you know, that we serve a God, beloved, I wish above all things that thy sh thou shalt prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. So God wants us to prosper. God wants us to thrive. God doesn't want you sitting on the sidelines of earth as a beggarly element of this world. God doesn't want you immersed in poverty. God doesn't want you immersed in bills. Uh, it says in Scripture, Philippians 4 and 19, that my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Uh, it goes on in Psalm 23. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Green pastures mean growing pastures. That God can not only, that you don't have to run to some uh, a perfect place or perfect city or bustling city, that God can provide for you wherever you are, that God will enable you to uh, be in a growing situation, that God's not going to have you in lack, that God's not going to have you in poverty, God's not going to have you in dire straits. Uh, he says here, he makes me to lie down uh, in green pastures, he leaded me beside the still waters. God's going to have you in peace. God doesn't want you worried about this bill collector calling and that bill collector calling. He doesn't want you to rob Peter to pay Paul and, and then hide from Paul so you can pay Andrew. Look, folks, God's going to provide for you. God's a provider, and he's not a liar. It says he, he restores my soul. Many of us need to be restored consistently. That you're not, sure, you're not going to be in one. As, as far as it concerned, that God's a restore, that God can restore not only property, but it says in one passage of the scripture in the book of Joel that he'll restore the years. God can restore time. He can give time back to you. Uh, he said he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Uh, he said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. The Lord is your shepherd. You shall not be in want. 
You should, I'm talking about when you walk through your sixth and seventh trouble, when you walk through the very valley of the shadow of death, that God's not going to have you in want, that God's not going to have you in dire straits, that God's going to be your uh, shepherd, he's going to be your overseer, he's going to be your uh, redeemer, he's going to, you know, that he, you know, that you are redeemed from the curse of the law, that God's going to provide like no other will. He said, Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, symbolic of his power, and thy staff, they comfort me. Verse, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Look, folks, God can provide for you, even though you're surrounded by those that don't like you, those that set traps for you, those that try to undermine you, those who try to downplay you, that God's going to throw a celebration and they're all going to be invited. You shall not want. God doesn't want you living in want. God doesn't want you living in poverty. God doesn't want you living in distresses. God doesn't want your bills to keep you up at night. There's a passage of scripture said that he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Look, folks, don't let your financial dilemmas keep you up all night because God's on the job. God's a provider. He said um, that he'll supply all of your needs. All of these things shall be added unto you if you seek him first. God's, God's concerned about your financial well-being. He's concerned about your prosperity. He's concerned about your income. He's concerned about your financial welfare. That God's uh, concerned about your money. It says here, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. Anointing is symbolic of consecration. It's a, a, a symbolic of, of uh, God bless you, definitely according to his riches in glory, which is, which is unbelievable, vast, beyond our comprehension. And anointing is symbolic of coronation, that God's going to release you to the world. The scriptures declare in... Uh, Isaiah 10 and 27, and it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken off of thy shoulders and his yoke from off of thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. God's about to remove, about to release to you a burden removing, yoke destroying power that will never allow you to be in long past today. Um, it says here, uh, my cup runneth over. That's 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 symbolic of overflow. The God doesn't want you just barely making it. He doesn't want you in want. He doesn't want you in dire straight. He doesn't want you passing the cup. He doesn't want you begging. God wants you to prosper. In verse four, He says, "Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever." Look, folks. God wants, he's your shepherd. My prayer is that he stays your overseer, that he stays your financial benefactor, your financial protector, that you put your hope and trust in him and you put your money, you know, put your concerns of your money in his hands. God knows how to provide for you. You'll never be in want, that you'll be young and old and over the course of time, you'll see that God will provide, that God will sustain, that God will keep you. The Lord is my shepherd. He's my overseer. He's, he sees after me. He's my director. He's my producer. He's my event planner. Hey, he's on the top of my calendar. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. And you won't be in want either if you trust God and give God dominion over every area of your life. God bless you.